What is up, Web3 people? Welcome back to the Morales channel. So you're probably already in love with the Morales Authentication API if you've tried it out. It allows you to handle all your Web3 authentication needs without any hassle at all. And then after you're authenticated, you can use Morales to query the blockchain, store data on the blockchain, whatever you'd like. But in some cases, your app might have data that doesn't need to be on the blockchain at all. And in these cases, you might want to integrate a good old centralized database. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to create a Next.js app that has Web3 authentication and integrate it with a MongoDB. Let's take a look at this. So where we authenticate via MetaMask over here. MetaMask asks us which account we want to set up. We connect. Then using the Morales Authentication API, we send a message and sign it. This logs in us to the application. And using the session, we get the user's address. We also have the information of the profile ID. And we use this unique profile ID generated by the Morales Authentication API to query our MongoDB to get this user's biography. So this data over here isn't stored on the blockchain. It's just in a general Mongo database, but we access it after we've handled Web3 authentication. And we can then even go ahead and change it. So let's say new bio, who this, update the bio, and look at this. Our bio has changed. And if we take a look at our MongoDB, refresh this page, look at this in our user module, we have new bio, who this, and the unique profile ID for this wallet address. So if you're excited for this, how to connect your own DB to a application using Web3 off, stay stuck in and I'll show you how to build this. Hey, I'm Jay, your Morales instructor from beautiful Finland. I got into crypto in 2020 and I've been building in the space ever since. In my free time, I enjoy running and at the gym and in the summer, you'll definitely find me at the golf course. Now let's get stuck in and learn about Web3. All right, getting started here in our IDE, we'll be using the Next.js Morales authentication repo as the backbone for this project. There'll be a link in the description for this repository and on the screen right now, there'll be a link to the video where we go over this repo if you want to go to check out that first. First thing I'll have you do after you've cloned this repo is jump into the .env.local.example file, remove the .example, so it'll be .env.local and provide your Morales API key. Again, there'll be a link in the description on how you can get your Morales API key. You should keep this safe. This is just for demonstration purposes, you are seeing this. Then there'll also be a way for you to generate a next auth secret. So go ahead and do that. Now I'll close this file. And over here in our terminal, we'll install all the dependencies by running npm i. All right, after your dependencies are installed, we'll install another library called Mongoose that will help us with interacting with our Mongo database. So npm i mongoose. And the repository should be ready to go straight out the box. So you just run npm run dev to get a local development server running on localhost 3000. Check out your browser like so. And if you navigate to localhost 3000 slash sign in, you should be out on the Web3 authentication page where you're allowed to authenticate via MetaMask. This pops up MetaMask, we sign the message, and this authenticates us to the app and takes us to the user route where we have the session details, the address of the wallet that signed the message, the signature, and their unique profile ID generated by the Morales Authentication API. So now we have this set up, we're going to be working on this user page and the authentication API to make sure we connect to a Mongo database. So before we jump back into the repo, I'll have you go to mongodb.com, sign up for our account or sign in if you already have one. And signing in, you should be prompted to a page like this. If it's your first time signing up, there might be some initial setup where you set up your first cluster. But after you do that, you should come to this page. And what I'll have you do first is go over to the database access. So we have to define a user who can access our database Add a new database user. We'll call it J Morales and we'll enter a password. You can make it auto generate one, but we'll just do one here quickly. Morales one, two, three. If we show it Morales one, two, three and we can make this a temporary user so it's only available for six hours so after this video goes live you can't use these details anymore all right so we add this user so now we have this user who can access our cluster on mongodb then network access we also have to provide ip addresses which can access our database we add an ip address you can allow access from anywhere we'll do this for this case and again we'll do this for six hours confirm so now we have a user who can access it and provided ip addresses that have access to our databases now jumping back into the database page we can go ahead and press connect here we connect our application and we have this line over here that we can connect Let's copy this and now we're good to go and jump over to Visual Studio Code. Here, let's first of all paste the MongoDB URL we just copied into our environment variables. So creating a variable called MongoDB underscore URI will be our MongoDB URL. Let's close this up. And here we have our J Morales account, but we also have to input the password, which was Morales123. 
Now, this is secret. You have to keep this safe and only have it in your environment variables. But this way, we can connect to our own Mongo database. Also, after the mongodb.net slash location, add a database name. We can call it, for example, Morales DB, like so. So now, whenever we connect, we connect to the Morales database that it will create if one doesn't already exist. But that's all you need to know over here. And now, let's go ahead and create that connection to our Mongo database. So, create a new file. Let's call it lib. And in here, a file called connectdb.js. So in here, we'll write the logic of how to connect to the Mongo database using our Mongo database URL stored in our environment variables. All right, so this is super simple to do. We first import Mongoose, of course, so we can interact with Mongo database. Then let's create a function which allows us to connect to the database. We can, for example, call it connectdb, and it's going to be an asynchronous function. Now we first want to check if we already have a connection to our database. So we can write a little conditional. We use Mongoose to check our connections. And if the first connection is in ready state, we can cons console log already connected. Otherwise, we'll return. Now, if this isn't the case, we can go ahead and create a new connection. So we use Mongoose again. We use the connect method to use our MongoDB URI stored in our environment variables. And if an error is thrown, we throw in that error, but otherwise we console log connected to Mongo database. And then finally, you just have to make sure you export this function, export default connect DB. And that is it. This is all you have to do for connecting to your Mongo database. Now we can use this function whenever we're trying to interact with our database to initialize that database connection with our app. Then we'll create another file just to create a module of a users class, which is essentially where we'll store data of the users, in this case, their profile ID and a biography of them that they can then eventually set after they log into the application. So we'll call it user schema.js. I created it in the lib folder. For better practices, you'd probably want to create a new folder called module, but that's just your preference. And then over here, again, let's import Mongoose like so. So now we have Mongoose access in this file as well. And now let's create that schema for the user's model. All right. So we define a variable called user schema and create a new Mongoose schema. And in here, we can define what variables it will take in. Let's put curly brackets and we'll only have two types of variables. So we'll have a profile ID, which is type string. And then that biography, let's put this in the right place. Biography will be type string and a default value of this is my bio will be set. Whenever a new user is created, they won't have the ability to set their biography as their user is created. So we'll set a default buyer. This is my bio. Then, of course, we can add the MongoDB to keep track of timestamps. So when this user is created and when it's edited, that's just a nice feature you could have and want in the future. Now, let's just format this a bit nicer. All right, looks good. And now we'll only really need this user schema if it's not already created in the MongoDB. So now let's say let users equal. And if we have a mongoose model called users, we'll let that equal users. But if we don't, we'll use the schema that we here created. So in our first iteration, we'll use this schema to define what a user looks like in our Mongo database. And then finally, again, we export our users. So now we have a connection function using mongoose and a users model function, which defines what a user looks like in our Mongo database. Save this. And now we can go ahead and start working with connecting to our Mongo database and setting up our users and updating them in our actual application. And the first step to do this is navigate to the pages folder, API, auth folder, and next auth. So this is where our endpoint for handling authentication in our Dex.js app happens. Let's in our imports, bring the two functions we just created, our connection to our database and our users. So we have to look for the lib folder and get the two different functions. Right. Now, if we scroll down over here, we authorize the user with the credentials from the Morales signature and use the Morales authentication API to verify the credentials. After this, we get a user object with the address profile ID expiration time and signature of that user. And then as we return it, we create a JWT token and a session with details with of this JWT token. But before we return, we can go ahead and make sure that we make a connection to our database check if any user with that specific profile ID that's just authenticated with the Morales authentication API exists in our Morales database. And if it doesn't, we can go ahead and create that user into our MongoDB database. So let's try and do that right. So now we can first await for our connection to our database. And after we have a connection to our Mongo database, we can go ahead and query if there is a user with a specific profile ID. So you can look at the Mongo database documentation for what methods they have, but find one is a method where it finds one match for a specific filter. In this case, we use the profile ID as a filter and search for the profile ID 
of the Morales authenticated user. Now we store this in a variable called Mongo user. And now we can set up a conditional to check if we actually got a response for a Mongo user like so. So if there wasn't any Mongo user, we go ahead and create a new Mongo user. Otherwise, we won't do anything like so. So our new user will use our user schema passing as the profile ID, the profile ID of the authenticated user. And then we await for this new user to be saved into our Mongo database. And that is all you have to do. Now, if we save this, everything should be functioning. Now we can go over and go to our local development server and test this out. So jump over into Google Chrome or whatever browser you'd like to use. And here in our Mongo database admin panel, let's just quickly check our database access. We have J Morales and it has read and write access. If it doesn't have read and write access to any database, you can edit it quickly over here, scroll down and the built in role, you can select read and write any database. So you just have to make sure that you have read and write access because otherwise you won't be able to change the Mongo database. But now jumping into your databases, you can browse collections. And as we haven't created the database yet, it'll be empty. But you jump in to your development server, localhost 3000. And let's go ahead and authenticate via MetaMask. Let's use account one over here to authenticate next and connect sign the message from Morales authentication API, and it takes us to the user page. But the cool thing that's happened is that we've created a new user in our Mongo database with this profile ID. Let's go check out our database, refresh this page. And would you look at that? We have a Morales database with a user's model. And in here we have the profile ID that matches the one that we have in our session. And the biography is this is my bio that we set as the default biography. Now, if we go ahead and sign out, and go ahead and authenticate again, sign, we don't get a new user over here. So if we refresh, our Mongo database still has just one user. But if we go ahead and sign out and go ahead, and disconnect and change our account to say account two over here, authenticate with this account, account two, next connect, sign and the Moras authentication API creates a new unique profile ID for this wallet address, which is 0x62. We go check out our Mongo database, refresh this page, and look at this. Now we have two users over here with this new user with 0x62 with being the profile ID just being generated now. Now, final thing is to on this page, present the option to actually go ahead and change your biography and query for what your current biography is. So let's go ahead and implement that now. Jump back into Visual Studio Code and let's jump into the file structure. Go over here to the pages and we got the user.jsx page. Here we can again import our connecting to the database and the user schema, save that for now. And then in our get server side props here, we can run a function to query our Mongo database and get a user biography because we can use the session to get the user's profile ID and thus filter our Mongo database call. So go ahead and again, connect to the database. And then we'll get the Mongo user by using the find one method again. And as the profile ID filter, we get from the session, the user object with the profile ID. Then we use the lean to get the lean JSON response out of this and stored in the user M variable. And then as long as the user M variable is not null, we know that the user M dot bio will have this user's biography. We just make sure to change it to a string if for some reason it is not stored as a string. And then we can pass it as props bio is user M dot bio like so save that then scroll all to the way to the top pass it to our user component bio over here and we can change what we are rendering a little bit. Let's for example, remove this pre tag and add two divs one with the address where we get the user's address and then one with a bio where we get the biography we just passed as props. Now save that and let's go check out our development server. And on localhost 3000 on the user route, you should now have the user's address. And from the MongoDB, we are actually fetching the user's biography. How cool is that? Now, all this has to do is allowing the user to change their biography by adding an input field and a button that calls a function to make changes in our Mongo database. Let's do that now, jump back into Visual Studio Code. And to do this slightly more securely, let's go ahead and create a API endpoint over here in our API folder, create a new file called update bio.js. Notice that it's not going to go in the auth folder, but the API folder. So this is an endpoint we'll call from our client to make that change in the Mongo database for the user's biography. Again, this you can start by importing our connection to the Mongo database and the user schema. And then we can export a asynchronous response where we first destructure from the request body, the profile ID and bio. So when we make a request to this update bio endpoint, we have to pass a body with a profile ID and bio. So we know which profile ID to adjust and what the new 
biography should be. Then again, make sure we connect to our database and then we can use another Mongo database method called find one and update where the first argument is the filter. So again, we're using the profile ID to filter. And then the second argument is which attribute we're going to change and to what. So we're using the profile ID to find the profile ID we want to change. And then we change the biography to whatever is sent in this request. And then we could, for example, send back a response with status 200. Everything worked fine with the bio sent back. So we know that the bio was successfully updated and we can actually go ahead and wrap this all in a try catch. Let's do that quickly over here like so. So we first try to do this, what we just pasted out. But if we catch an error, we respond with a status 4000 and the error that was encountered. Now we have this endpoint and we can call it from our client side. So jump back into the user.jsx. We'll add a couple of imports. So we want use state to be able to keep track of what the user wants to change their biography to. And then, of course, we need Axios to make a call to our update bio endpoint. And now we can go ahead and create our state variable value and we change it using the change value and we set it initially to new biography. Then we create a function called async function update bio where we make that Axios post request. So we're making a post request to the API folder update bio endpoint. And as the body for this post, we're going to use the profile ID from the session users profile ID and the bio will be set to our state variable, which is currently set at new bio. And as response, we'll get data and we can actually just say console.log bio updated to and then data.bio because as the response of our update bio was the bio itself. Now, final thing we can add is a location reload. This is kind of a hacky solution, but as we reload, reload the page after this function is run, we get our server to fetch the new biography of the user from our Mongo database. Save that and now create the rendering for the page. What I'll do is I'll just quickly paste it. You'll have access to the final repository in the description below so you can check it out there. But essentially, we're just creating this input field, which on change changes the value we set our biography to. And then we have another button that on click just calls the update bio function. And that is it. That is all you have to do. We save that. And now our development server should be able to query our biography and go change our Mongo database biography as long as a user is authenticated. So jump back into Google Chrome. Look at this. We have a new bio and an update bio button. So we can straight away give this a test new bio test, for example, press the button update bio. And look at that, our bio is updated to new bio test. If we open up our Mongo database, refresh the page, we still have two users. The first one has this is my bio as their biography, but the next one has new bio test as their biography. How cool is that? We can even test this out. Go over here, sign out, sign back in with account one. So disconnect our account like so, change to account one, authenticate via MetaMask. Next, connect sign the Mars authentication and we get the profile ID for 0x4d and we know that their bio is still set the default this is my bio then we can go over here and say web3 mage try update their bio and web3 mage is now their biography and it is set in the mongo database if we reroll the page look at this now this user has a biography of web3 mage and the other user still has the new bio test biography that is how you use Morales Web3 authentication, but still integrate to a centralized database for your application for any needs you might want. I hope this video was informative for you and you can find use in it. I'll see you in the next one.